Let's see. Shoulder length, dark brown or black hair, medium build, dark eyes, mid to late 30s, and I think 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 8 should be about right. I thought to myself as I filled out the questionnaire. Good sense of humor is a must and intelligent was a no-brainer I laughed to myself at the pun I just made. Needs to speak a second language, preferably Spanish or Japanese, and must like kids. That was a huge requirement. I looked at my answers to the questionnaire and tweaked a few of them before clicking send. I had also included a little paragraph on who I was, without mentioning names, and exactly why I was doing this. I wasn't expecting a supermodel, far from it. I was looking for a normal woman who would be satisfied with me and my lifestyle that also included my two children. You see, I loved the feeling of being in love and really enjoyed being married, just not to the woman I was currently married to. Confused? I, you wouldn't be if you were married to Heather. We've been married for eight years and will not make our ninth. Looking back, I probably never should have married her. But we've had the same arguments before we even tied the knot, although I thought that she would eventually grow up and change. I'm sorry to say she never did. Even after having two kids and countless arguments, she never saw anything wrong with what she was doing. Heather would just say that's the way she was with a flippant tone in her voice and leave it at that, but not this time. She had crossed the line one too many times and I was done. We didn't marry out of high school or even college. I wanted to be set in business. I wanted to have a stable life before I settled down. My two best friends in the world and I went into business together and spent six difficult years building our advertising business. We weren't huge but had a good customer base and we were growing every year. I met Heather at a friend's party two years earlier when our business was into its fourth year and growing slowly but steadily. She was blonde, tall, and very good looking. I am not unattractive but don't have the look women swoon over. I guess I'm a little better than average looking, and if you didn't like me, well that was your loss. I can remember back in college, once asking the most attractive girl I ever saw to dance. I was a freshman and my two buddies dared me to go ask her. She turned down 99% of the guys who asked her to dance and was just standing there with her group of friends looking great when I walked up to her. You want to dance? I asked knowing fully well what she was going to say. She gave me a disdainful look and told me she'd rather not. Thank goodness I said loud enough so everyone could hear. For a moment I thought you were going to say yes, and then I'd have to actually dance with you. I only asked you to be nice. You see, an arrogant, self-centered person like yourself probably doesn't get to dance much what, with her head shoved that far up her posterior? Can't. But I thought I'd ask you anyway. But with that said, if you'll excuse me I needed to use the restroom anyway I said walking away from her and her stunned group. More than a few people started to chuckle. As you can see, I have no problem speaking my mind. Well, I never used to. That is before I met Heather. I guess I overlooked what she was really like. Getting back to Heather, for some reason she decided to go out with me when I asked her. I wasn't exactly sure why, but was happy nonetheless. I had some money in my pocket, and for the first time in a long while I could now show a woman a better time than just a movie and pizza afterwards. Steve, how have you been? Still working hard, Heather greeted me, catching up to me in the mall. Work is still there, but we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. How about you? Are you still at that accounting firm? Four years next week, she crowed proudly. You want to grab a bite sometime and catch up? Sure, that would be great. Why don't I look at my schedule and give you a call I told her surprised as heck. Great. I'll expect to hear from you soon. She even had a big smile on her face. Well, I've got to go. I've got a hair appointment and don't want to be late. She waved goodbye and was gone in less than two minutes. I won't bore you with the details of my dates thereafter. All right, for me, I was in seventh heaven. We'd been going out on and off for six months when we decided to become exclusive. We were coming up on our fourth month of being exclusive when I decided to go all out. Saturday, I took her to a fancy restaurant, went on a carriage ride around the lake, and ended up at a nice dance club. Why don't I sneak over to the bar and get us something to drink? I'll be right back, I turned, and began making my way through the crowd. It took me all of ten minutes, but when I returned to our table, I noticed she was gone. Maybe she went to the ladies' room I thought sitting down waiting for her. At five foot eight and a full head of blonde hair, she wasn't hard to spot, especially on the dance floor. I didn't believe my eyes, so I stood up to get a better view. Yes, that was Heather with some very tall guy. If the music hadn't stopped just then, I was getting ready to go over and stop it myself. She walked back to our table with a big smile on her face. You're back, she said, picking up her margarita. It's hot out there, she was fanning herself with one hand and sipping on her drink in her other. 
I needed that she said finally putting the glass down. You leave me again and dance with him. You can find your own way home tonight. Heather, it's just a dance. And we're just on a date too, I guess. Heather, what the heck are you doing? Leaving? What does it look like? You were just going to leave me here without saying a word. Heather, I told you inside that if you left me again, I was leaving, and you still walked away with that guy. Don't call me, I'll call you, I called through the window, at a now angry Heather. I pulled away feeling just like Paul Newman in Cool Hand Luke. What we have here is a failure to communicate I remember him saying out the window just before he was shot, and that's just what Heather and I had. She never called me, nor I her. I dated others, and even though I missed her like heck, I wasn't going to be taken advantage of or disrespected. If she had asked me first, I probably wouldn't have minded her dancing a fast song or two with someone else but never, I repeat never, a slow song. There was no way in heck I was going to let anyone that close to my supposed girlfriend. Sandy and I were having dinner at Tony's, it was our second date, when I heard a familiar voice behind me. I didn't even have to turn around to know whose it was. The evening Heather, I said, without even looking at her. By that time, she had moved to the side of our table along with her current partner. How have you been? Just wonderful now that I'm no longer with an insecure man anymore. Glad to hear it. But excuse my manners, Heather. This is Sandy. Sandy, this is Heather, a girl I used to date. Steve, we did more than date. That's right, we did that is until you let your good looks and ego get the better of you. But that all behind us now, isn't it? Would you like to introduce us to your man of the night? That is unless you plan on dumping him for someone better later on, I said sarcastically. Forget you, Steve. I don't really want to talk about it, and besides, it's in the past. Bull crap. Steve, the way you two were going at each other, anyone can see you both aren't over each other, that is, except the two of you. The night kind of went downhill after that. My brain was throwing out millions of pieces of data for me to process. Steve, when you're done with her, maybe we can try again or not. I'm not used to playing second fiddle and I don't like it. She was right. I guess there was still something there. I mumbled something about calling her, but we both knew it wasn't going to happen. The next week and a half was tough. We were running late on two projects and had three others on the line. I can't get Heather off my mind. Steve, look, call her, wine, dine, and get to know her better and come back tomorrow with your head on straight. I need you 100% so we can get the rest of the projects done and on time. So if it's not too much trouble, can we please get back to work? It was easy for Ken and Andy, my other partner, to talk. They both had fiancés who loved them to death and more than understood about their working 24-7 to finish up a project. All Heather used to do was complain if she wasn't the center of my or anyone else's universe. But Sandy had been right. I still had feelings for her. I got nervous and decided to send her an email instead of calling. I asked if she was available on Saturday, and told her I wanted to have a conversation. When she returned and asked if it involved dinner, I knew she would be there regardless of the food. I felt relieved, as did Ken and Andy, when I finished my project and helped both of them complete theirs. You see, we were equal partners, and when we created the rules for our company, we made them very strict. This way, none of us could sell our shares without the approval of the other two majority ruled in all cases. Each of us had our own strengths. Ken was an amazing salesman and Andy was a phenomenal graphic designer. As for me, I was great at coming up with slogans and bringing the whole project together, including making sure we made money. We made a great team. Steve, why are we here? Heather asked once we finished ordering. Just two old friends having a nice dinner together, that's all. Yeah, right. And what's with the email? Were you afraid to call? Afraid I would say no and hurt your ego again? When she said that, I stood up. I guess you're right. It was silly of me to think you've changed I placed my napkin back on the table and prepared to leave. You're always going to be self-centered. You will never think about anyone else but yourself. Please sit down. It was just a silly joke. Can't a girl make a light-hearted joke to break the tension? If it was a joke, it wasn't funny. But before we address any issues, there are a few things I need to express. Can we at least wait until after dinner for you to discuss terms and conditions? I'm quite hungry and I don't want to miss out on a delicious meal if things get too heated. Let's have a few drinks, enjoy a nice quiet dinner, and then address any concerns we may have afterwards. She said this with a smile that could warm even the coldest heart. All right, let's call a truce until after dessert. Who said I was going to give you dessert? You may get a hug, but I never promised dessert, she said, taking a sip of her wine. That weekend, uh, we worked out most of our differences. We set boundaries for each other 
and developed a safe word to use when one of us was crossing a line. I would occasionally receive a call or email from Heather with just one word, chocolate. We both knew what she meant. Guys, I have to go. I'll see you in the morning. Steve, where are you going? We can finish the Carter layout by nine if we work together, Ken told Andy and me. Andy looked exhausted, and I was only functioning at half capacity. Heather is waiting for me to have dinner, and I would rather spend time with her than eat cold pizza, I said, putting on my coat. Besides, she's much more attractive than you, and I hope to spend some quality time with her before I am too tired. Heather and I officially became a couple, and two months later, she moved in with me. I still worked incredibly hard, but I believed I was building a future for the both of us. It would all be worth it in the long run. When I showed Andy and Ken the ring I planned on giving Heather, they were shocked. I have nothing against Heather, and I know you love her, but have you thought about what would happen if things don't work out? Andy asked. I gave him a stern look. Steve, just hear me out. If you marry her and it doesn't work out, she could get half of what you own, including the business. We've worked too hard to let someone come in and cause trouble. All I'm saying is that you should consult our attorney and get his opinion on the matter. If you're comfortable with what he says, then go for it with both of our blessings. You guys need to relax and take a break. You're working too hard. Now that you've mentioned it, what are you going to do with Anne and Linda? Have you discussed a prenuptial agreement with them? They both said their partners were fine with it, and if I didn't believe them, I could ask. Guys, it feels so impersonal, and I know it will cause an argument. Steve, isn't it better to discuss it openly now, before you ask her? If you do it later, she might think you have doubts. Get her to agree to it now, and then propose to her. This way you're protected, and it never has to be addressed again. You'll sleep much better knowing you're covered. Andy said. He was wrong I slept worse, especially with Heather's warm body next to mine. All right, I was weak when it came to Heather. I had been in control with every other girl I had ever dated, but when I looked at her, my confidence vanished and I couldn't think straight. A week later, after dinner and a lot of quality time together, I brought up the issue subtly. Honey, can I ask you something? I began the conversation. Of course, babe, anything she replied, cuddling up to me. Do you trust me? I mean, do you believe I would ever do something to hurt you? No, I hope not. Why are you asking? Have you done something foolish? Now she was sitting up, looking at me. No, I haven't done anything. I've just been thinking about us and our future, that's all. Sweetie, I think about us every day, and I am so happy. You know I've worked hard to grow my business. I see it as my safety net, you know, for our future. You work too much, and your partners don't appreciate everything you do for them, she responded, which made it even harder to bring up what I needed to ask. We all have our own skills, and we collaborate to get the job done. It has always been that way. But when we started the company, we put in some rules that prevent anyone else from owning shares of the company. This way, only the three of us would ever own it. What happens if one of you wants to leave or if one of you passes away? Then the other two buy the third person's share of the company and keep it within the original owners. Steve, what does this have to do with us? Well, I'm getting to that I half whispered, feeling my neck and face grow sweaty. Would you be opposed to signing a prenuptial agreement? I managed to say hesitantly, waiting for her reaction. So you're asking me to marry you, right? And you want me to sign away my rights to anything and everything so that when you get tired of me, you can just dump me like garbage. Is that about right? Heather stood up from the bed, and even in the dim lighting of the room, I could see her face turning red. I started counting down from five, expecting an explosion. You heartless piece of junk, who do you think you are? Thanks guys, I told my partners after the second day. Heather left me because I brought up that prenuptial agreement, and now she won't even talk to me. Is there anything else you'd like me to share with her? I'm sure you two could come up with more things to make her even angrier at me, if that's even possible. Steve, I'm sorry, but how would you feel if she left you and you lost half of what you worked so hard to build? I knew they were right, but it didn't make it any easier to accept. When I got home that night, she was there waiting for me. Do I look like some money-grabbing person to you? Do you think that the only reason I'm with you is because of your money? Well, do you? She yelled accusingly at me. Babes, I'm sorry about the other night, and no, I don't think that. It's just that, you know, if we got together and it didn't work out, I started to say before she stopped me again. Heather, I'd never cheat on you. Oh, now I get it. You think I'm the one who's going to cheat. That's what this is all about. At least I'm happy I found out ahead of time what you really think of me. You really are a miserable jerk, aren't you? 
With that, she turned her back on me. Now I got mad. All right, Miss High and Mighty, what would you like to include then? I want to protect my business interests and everything I've built up to this point. But if you've got something to bring to the table, now's the time to speak up. She stopped and turned around. How about if you cheat on me? How about 10 years down the road you want to replace me with a newer and better model? What happens then? Well, we can draft something into the agreement that covers that if you're afraid I'd do something like that. I hate this as much as you do, but if it's all laid out in black and white, at least we'll know the consequences if one of us decides to stray. So in other words, you don't think we will make it. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Heather, that's not what I'm saying. I love you so much, and we may never ever need it, but it'll cover the both of us if we do. So, if you cheat on me, I can get whatever I want. And the same applies to me if you do. She stopped, and I could see the wheels turning in her head. I don't like it, but I understand the reasoning behind it. It's like we're putting together an impersonal marriage contract point four, condition three, and stuff like that. Well, at least one good thing came out of all of this she winked at me. What in the world was that? I asked. At least I now know for sure you want to marry me, and with that her frown became a smile. Steve, I know you would never try to hurt me, well, at least not outside of the bedroom. So if I have to sign some ridiculous prenup to have you forever, then I guess that's what's going to have to happen. Let's just get it over with so we can go back to the way it was before you get cold feet. I won't get cold feet, I said in a matter-of-fact voice. Whatever she scoffed. Grabbing my hand, she led the way back to our bedroom. We need to put these last three days behind us, and I only know one way to start the healing process. I was late to work the next day. It took a couple of weeks to get the exact wording hashed out. My business and house were off limits, but everything going forward was fair game. What it came down to was that if we decided to split, it would be a 60-40 split with me getting the 60% since I made the most money. However, if one of us cheated, the party at fault would get, at the most $25,000 and the rest would go to the wronged party. The most detailed part was when it came down to what was considered cheating. The definition not only dealt with the physical act but also included emotional dishonoring and shaming of the other party. I expanded it to include the effect it could possibly have on my business. All in all, it was detailed, thorough and best of all now complete. We both signed it. After the document was notarized, the lawyer kept a copy and a copy was put in our bank safety deposit box, and I hoped forgotten. That night we went out to dinner to celebrate. It was like a huge weight had been lifted off my shoulders. I sat there just staring at her thinking about how much I loved her and how close I'd come to losing her. Happy? I asked. Very, she said reaching for my hands. You know I do love you, don't you? And you know I'm totally in love with you, also. I replied while our eyes made love to each other. Let's skip dinner and go home. Not on your life, cowboy. I'm hungry and I need a big piece of meat tonight, she said looking at me. And maybe dinner too. What would you say if I asked you to marry me? You already asked me. Don't you remember? I figured now with our talk about a prenup finished it was a done deal. But I never actually said the words. Okay, Steve. Let's hear them. She put her wine glass down and folded her arms. Here? Now? What better place? At least I'll have a bunch of witnesses to this monumental event, she giggled nervously. I knew she was just teasing me knowing that I'd never do it in a public place like a packed restaurant. But this time she was wrong. I had been carrying that ring around with me for the last month waiting for just the right moment to give it to her. I stood up, walked over to her and pulled her to her feet. Steve, you're embarrassing me. She said looking around because people were now glancing our way. I dropped down on one knee and pulled out the ring from my vest pocket. Heather, I love you more than anyone else on this earth. You make me happy and I want to live my life with you forever. Would you do me the honor of becoming my partner? I said it loud enough that everyone around us heard. The place went dead quiet. Everyone was watching us. She looked at the ring and silently mouthed yes. Yes, you crazy fool, I'll marry you, she finally exclaimed out loud. The place erupted with cheering. The patrons clapped and called out their congratulations to us. We spent that night cuddling and talking about our future together. With me embracing her tightly, she felt safe and loved. We had a small wedding four months later, and two weeks after that I found out she was pregnant with our first child. After our son, Nathan, was born, she quit work and became a full-time parent, and when our daughter, Lily, came along, we were complete, as she put it. One boy, one girl, and a house with a white picket fence we had it all. We would have dinner with my partners and their spouses once a month they'd both gotten married. 
Every quarter we'd throw a party for all our customers. It wasn't a huge affair, just dinner and drinks as a way of thanking them for their ongoing support. I think I started to notice it just after Nathan was born, but never paid much attention. But looking back, I probably should have. When she walked into a room, she wanted all eyes on her. She started to dress in a manner that would make sure that would happen. At first, it wasn't so flagrant, then she started pushing the envelope a lot more before she got pregnant with Lily. It stopped for a while after Lily was born because she spent an obscene amount of time dressing her our daughter in the frilliest of clothing she could find. It was at our quarterly get-together, just after our sixth anniversary, that we had our first big disagreement. I was working the floor with my partners and Heather was working the floor for an entirely different reason. I don't think she was drunk, maybe just a little tipsy nonetheless, she was getting way too friendly with a few of the males in attendance. She'd always liked to dance, and was an excellent dancer, but what she was doing out there was more than a little suggestive. Steve, is Heather drunk? I don't think so, why do you ask? She just turned me around and pointed me at the dance floor. The only way I could describe what she was doing was dancing provocatively with her partner right there on the dance floor. The worst part about it was I hadn't a clue who the guy was. When the song ended, I was right there. Grabbing her by the arm, I asked her what she was doing. Steve, I'm dancing with the son of your oldest client. He asked me if I wanted to dance and I accepted. What's the problem? To me, it's a big deal and you're not a young kid anymore. You're married with two children. I'm not telling you not to have fun, but when one of my partner's spouses tells me you're behaving inappropriately on the dance floor, then it becomes my business. Think about what my other customers are thinking. They're probably saying what a lucky person you are to have such an attractive spouse she tried to say with a smile on her face. Not this group, Heather. These are older folks who wouldn't say anything if they had a mouthful of it. But know this, they would pull a contract away from us in a heartbeat if they thought there was a chance of any improper behavior going on that would affect their business. All right, I'll cool it. But you really need to loosen up. It was a long ride home. We argued over what was appropriate behavior for the spouse of one of the owners. I told her what I thought and she just rolled her eyes. After that, it got worse. At a charity auction two months later, she wore a skirt that I thought was a little too short. I made my displeasure known and Heather said she wasn't going to change. Steve, if you don't like the way I'm dressed, just leave me home and go by yourself. You know I can't do that. They're expecting both of us. I reluctantly agreed, even though I didn't want to. She made it a point to socialize that night, despite my efforts to keep her at a distance. We danced to more than half of the songs, and when they played a slow one, I think she snuggled up to me. What on earth are you doing? Have you lost your mind? I whispered angrily, trying my best to keep a smile on my face. Everyone in the room knows us, and it makes it seem like I'm okay with it, or you don't care about our marriage. Either way, you've embarrassed me. So grab your purse, smile politely at everyone because we're leaving before you cause any more damage to my reputation. Got it? You don't have to treat me like a child, she snapped. Sweetheart, sometimes your brain doesn't seem to register what I'm saying unless I break it down for you. I said, still forcing a smile. We finally made it out of the building, but the argument continued in the car, and it was a big one. Steve, I'm not an idiot. I have an MBA and a degree in accounting, she spat at me. Well, then use your brain more often. You know what they say, if you don't use it, you lose it, I shot back. Is that supposed to be a threat? Not a threat, a promise. Venom dripped from her words. I was angry, she was angry, and we both refused to back down. I heard your wife almost won a date with a handsome guy the other night, Andy said, trying to make a joke. Stuff for the office is one thing, but if she had won the date, that expense would come out of your own pocket. But his attempt at humor fell flat. Steve, I was just kidding. It's not funny now, and it definitely wasn't funny the other night. Let's just drop the subject, okay? No problem. I was just trying to lighten the mood. It was not a great start to a Monday morning. Thankfully, work kept me occupied, and I could shut my office door and focus on my tasks without any interruptions. The atmosphere at home was cold, to say the least. Are you done sulking yet? Heather asked me after dinner on Friday night. If you're not, I'm going out. I've had enough of your icy treatment since last Saturday night. You still don't understand, do you? I said, looking at her. And I'm afraid you never will, I sadly admitted, shaking my head before walking away. Talk to me, will you? Don't just walk away, or else I'll go out, she threatened. Fine, suit yourself. I should have been more controlling. Maybe then I could have managed her behavior a bit more. 
but deep down, I knew that would never work, especially with her. I'm leaving, don't expect me to wait up. She walked out wearing a short black skirt that left little to the imagination and a low-cut white top. After you leave, where should I send your things? I called out to her. She shot me a look and walked out the door. I contemplated getting drunk, but thought better of it. My marriage was dying rapidly. It seemed like she didn't care anymore. Even though she wasn't the best wife, Heather was a great mother, and that was one of the few reasons I tolerated her disrespectful behavior. I heard her take a shower, brush her teeth, and then finally saw the lights go out. Well, I didn't exactly sleep, but spent the night sitting on the couch. I was tired of her flirting, her dancing, and her interest in any guy who paid her the slightest bit of attention. I had a jealous streak, but her possessiveness had faded long ago. She was my wife, and no one else's. She married me, which meant she was mine, and I was hers. Honestly, I didn't trust her anymore. If she acted that way in front of me, I shuddered to think about her behavior when I wasn't around. It was a terrifying thought, and it saddened me to realize that I would soon be starting a new chapter in my life. Around 7 o'clock in the morning, I looked up and saw her standing there in her bathrobe, leaning against the doorframe with her arms crossed. We need to talk. I didn't do anything with anyone last night. I had a few drinks, danced with a few guys, and came back home. That's it. I didn't hug anyone, let anyone touch me. You have to believe me, she pleaded, desperation evident in her voice. Why should I believe you? I see the way you act around our friends. I can only imagine what you do around strangers. I just don't want to fight about it anymore. You live your life, and I'll live mine. We'll meet in the middle sometimes, and life will go on. That way, when I won't have to worry about you embarrassing me anymore. You're giving up on us? On our marriage? She shouted. What marriage? I felt more like your keeper than your husband for far too long. It's like a father trying to protect his daughter's innocence. He does everything he can, but in the end, it's up to his daughter to decide whether to keep it or give it away. You gave away our marriage. Steve, you're acting like a jerk. I didn't give anything away, she protested. You're right, you didn't. Instead, you made me pay with my self-respect and the love I once had for you over and over again. But not anymore. I have nothing left to give. You still don't understand, do you? I'm done, it's over. She got angry, muttered something under her breath, and walked away. I thought we could continue living together, but separately for the sake of our kids. But I was wrong. I never mentioned the quarterly party on Sunday. But somehow she found out. I looked forward to a quiet evening with old friends. The past few parties had been a struggle, always keeping an eye on Heather and another on my guests. Is your wife coming tonight? Ken asked me as we leaned against the bar. Nope, I didn't tell her about it. Well, I guess there won't be any excitement, then he joked, hoping to lift my spirits, but it didn't work. The party was in full swing, and we were about to sit down for dinner when I caught sight of her from the corner of my eye. Her dress dipped too low in the front and was too revealing on the side. I almost didn't make it, darling Heather said, giving me a hug. She proceeded to grab an empty chair. I looked at her, and she did look stunning in what must have been a new dress. It accentuated her body perfectly. Linda told me about the party, and I didn't want you to forget, she said, looking at me. She whispered softly, we wouldn't want people to think there are problems in our relationship, would we? She smiled at the couple across the table from us. I thought you weren't coming, Andy reminded me. You can thank your wife for her presence, I told him with disdain. Hey, it's not her fault you can't control your wife. I wanted to strangle him right then and there, and I think he knew it as soon as he opened his mouth. Maybe she'll behave herself tonight, you know, try to make amends. Heather worked the room, and most guys did their best to discreetly peek at her cleavage, although she knew they were looking. When the band started playing, she calmly walked over and asked me to dance. Why are you here? Haven't you done enough? Steve, you have two options. We can pretend to be the loving couple we truly are, or I can act like the biggest pain in the neck, your choice. I walked away from her and went over to Linda first, thanking her for telling Heather about the party. Then, I went to the bartender and thanked him for the drink. I discreetly gave him some money and told him what I wanted him to do. He smiled, I didn't, and I returned to my seat. David, if your brother doesn't stop touching my wife right now, he's going to seriously regret it. Do you understand? He looked at me and knew I wasn't joking. Phil, we're leaving right now, David told his brother, and they both looked over at me. Phil checked out Heather. It seemed like he was thanking her for the dance, and without saying another word, they both left. 
That ended the party on a bad note. Ken, D Andy ladies I'm leaving I told them. I probably won't be into work tomorrow, or maybe even the day after. I have to take care of a personal matter I explained. Steve, maybe if you talk to her Linda suggested before I cut her off. If Andy had seen you behaving like that, what would he have done? She didn't have a good response to that. I walked over to the bartender, who handed me the company camera. I gave him some money, but and then I headed home. My home. I have no idea what time Heather came home because I didn't hear her. I found her asleep on the sofa in the den as I was leaving. First, I stopped at the bank and emptied out our safety deposit box. Then, I went to my attorney and gave him the camera and our prenuptial agreement. I told him I wanted a divorce and that I wanted it to be anything but amicable. I spent the next few hours on the computer rearranging stocks, bonds, and bank accounts. I canceled credit cards and reopened new ones under my name only. I even sent an email to my kids' school, letting them know that I was going through a divorce so that Heather couldn't take them away. I made sure my attorney had a court order, signed by a judge, stating that I had to be notified immediately if Heather tried to take the children out of school. Where have you been all day? I called your workplace, and they said you took the day off, Heather said, watching my reaction carefully. I'm sorry about last night. I guess between my anger and the alcohol, I made a complete fool of myself. I've apologized to Ken, Andy, and their wives, and I've been waiting for you to come home so we could tum haunt. I told you before that I'm done with you. If I had wanted to marry someone promiscuous, I would have picked someone better than you. At least with someone promiscuous, I would have known where I stood, but with you, I never truly knew until last night. I had my suspicions, but I never knew what a conniving person you could be. Thanks for finally showing your true colors. Steve, you don't mean that. I'm sorry we can work through this, I know we can. I just shook my head. Here is a check for $10,000 for legal advice. You will be served divorce papers on Thursday, and you'll find that all our joint accounts and credit cards are now closed. You can stay in the house, just stay away from me. According to our prenuptial agreement, we will share custody of the kids, and since I had this house before I met you, they will be staying here for the time being. Let's try to make this as civil as possible, if not for our own sake, then for the kids. Don't even think about taking them and running away. I have a court order stating that I must be notified immediately if you try to take the kids out of school for any reason. Once you have a lawyer, I'll send them a copy of our prenuptial agreement. I'd like to say it's all business, but it's not. This is personal to me now, so if you'll excuse me, I need to tell our kids that we're getting a divorce and make it as easy for them as I can. I walked away from a shocked Heather. She hired a good lawyer, thinking she would get a lot of money from me. However, when he saw the agreement, the depositions I had from people at the parties, and the video of her behavior at the party, Bert, he had a serious talk with her. She wasn't happy about it. The divorce was straightforward, and since everything was spelled out in the agreement, it was quick. I don't know if she hated me, but she should have, because my lawyer was tough. Heather ended up in a small apartment with her jewelry, clothes, car, and some money that wouldn't last forever. I let her see the kids at the house, but I made sure I was always present. She ended up finding a part-time accounting job and doing freelance work. For the next three months, I felt pretty good about myself. I had my kids with me because Heather couldn't financially support them. She saw them a couple of times a week and even had visitations at her apartment on weekends. I tried to stay out of the way when she came to get them. I didn't have to see her if I didn't want to, and I didn't. I didn't start dating again simply because I didn't want to. We were busy and gaining a lot of new business. Then, I was outnumbered. No, 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 I won't tolerate that I said, raising my voice at the two of them. Why on earth would I agree to something like that? You know what she's like? Look, Anne says she needs the money after your divorce, and this way we won't have to worry about or take care of anything for our get-togethers. She'll handle all the arrangements, send out the invitations, and prepare the food and drinks. All we have to do is show up and have a good time for once. Come on. It'll be a win-win situation for everyone. I objected, but I was outvoted. I initially didn't want to go, but that would have been detrimental for our business. So, I suppressed my reservations and decided to attend. Good evening, Steve. Heather, I nodded, acknowledging her presence. I have everything under control. Just enjoy yourself and pretend I'm not here. Yeah, right. Turned out, I was wrong. Everything went smoothly, and it was probably the best party we had ever thrown. Well, that's what our clients told us. We gain new business. That 
and Ken and Andy were convinced it was because of the party. We need to have these parties every other month and open them up to prospective clients. We could even have a dedicated meeting room, and they tried to convince me, eyeing one of the girls. You guys can stay if you want, but I'm leaving. I want no part in this, I declared. As I made my way out of the room, Heather approached me. Leaving so soon? The party is just getting started. Did you ever actually love me, or was it all just an act? I asked. I did love you, but you became so boring. I felt like a wild horse that wanted to run free, but you kept trying to confine me. Just so we're clear, I never cheated on you until that night. I thought you were my knight in shining armor and would fight for me, but you never did. Get real. Why on earth would I fight for someone who went out of their way to act promiscuously and embarrass me? It seems like you're giving our clients more than you gave me during the last six months of our marriage. When I pay for companionship, I expect them to behave professionally. I said, leaving her speechless and my pride intact. I stopped attending our company parties after that night. Mr. Collins, I greeted him, rising from my desk and pulling out a chair for him. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Steve, I don't like making people wait to hear bad news. I rearranged my schedule so we could meet first thing this morning. Please have a seat. Can I get you anything to eat or drink? I asked. No, thank you. I won't be here that long, he said, crossing his legs. Steve, I like you, and it pains me to say that I'm pulling my business from your firm. A group of seven of us don't particularly like the direction your company is going, and we can't afford to be associated with it if something were to go wrong. I don't understand. Did we do something wrong? If so, let us fix it, I pleaded. Steve, I've always liked you, and you've always led me in the right direction. However, your two partners are taking your firm down an unstable path. Can I ask you a personal question? Of course, go ahead. I replied, I haven't seen you at the last couple of parties. Can I ask why you haven't been there? That's a personal matter. You mean because your ex-wife is providing escorts to your new clients? Steve, one of them even propositioned me to go upstairs. Like I said, we don't like the direction your company is taking, and we're exploring other options. Think fast, my brain screamed at me. How about if I guarantee you that in less than 30 days, our company will make a complete turnaround? What if I tell you that if it doesn't, I'll start my own firm? Look, it's only 30 days, and if I'm wrong, what have you lost? Just give me one month to prove it to you. I could see the wheels turning in his head. Okay, 30 days and not a day longer. 30 days from today, I'll be back here to either shake your hand or withdraw my business. Agreed? Thank you. I promise you won't be disappointed. I knew I had to fix this situation quickly, and I needed my partner's help. Andy and Ken arrived late as usual. Guys, we have a major problem. Some of our clients are considering withdrawing their business. One of them was approached by my ex-wife's escorts at the last party. For God's sake, he was with his wife. I told them we'd fix it, but we only have 30 days to do so. I need your help. What's the phrase? Deaf, dumb, blind, and oblivious. That's what they were. They liked the parties just the way they were, and if a few of the old guys didn't like it, tough. Look, Steve, we've got contracts with all of them. They can't just walk away without giving us a huge cancellation penalty and they're not going to do that. You worry way too much, they told me. Forget about them, I thought. I'm not giving up without a fight. I picked up the phone. I set it up for a lunch meeting instead of dinner because I didn't want anyone to know about it. I'm glad you could both join me. I said to Anne and Linda. Why so secretive, Steve? Anne asked. I, or should I say we've, got a big problem. I then went on to explain about my meeting with Mr. Collins and yesterday's discussion with their two husbands. If I have to, I'll go out on my own. I've worked too hard to build this business to see it go downhill because of an ex-wife and a few people who aren't trustworthy. What people? Anne said now straightening up in her seat. Haven't you been to the parties over the last six months? All those women handing out drinks and food are hired by Heather. She told us they were ex-models Linda added in. Our husbands would never have gone along with this. They both insisted. Are you planning on going to the party Saturday, I asked. Not really, they've become more like college fraternity parties than business get-togethers, Anne said, looking at Linda for agreement. Now, for a real personal question, when the two of you signed your prenuptial agreements, were they just like mine and Heather's? Steve, after we saw what Heather signed, we told our husbands there was no way in heck we were signing one, and we didn't. I was stunned. You didn't sign anything? Only our marriage license, Linda said with a smile. My mind was racing. Can we meet Sunday at my place? 
say 10.30. What for? Anne asked. I want to show you what really happens at those parties now. I've got a friend who will tape what's going on, and we can watch it together. Steve, that's kind of sneaky, isn't it? Anne said, getting a little uncomfortable. Look, the name of the game is, Do You Trust Your Husbands? I just want to put an end to what I think is going on, that's all. I'm sorry if I don't sound overly caring or concerned about Andy or Ken. This is my, and I guess your livelihood too, we're talking about. Well, I'm going to do it with or without your approval. I just wanted to let you both know ahead of time. You can warn your husbands or let it ride. It's your choice. Steve, you wouldn't really go out on your own, would you? Linda inquired of me, seeming more than a little concerned. I wouldn't want to, but if I have to, I will. Why don't we hold judgment until Sunday? Maybe the two of them will have a change of heart after my talk with them, and if not, oh well. None of us ate much for lunch. Since our company was paying for the rooms, the hotel had no problem letting my colleague in early Saturday morning. John, when everyone leaves Saturday night, I want you to remove all the cameras and get me the recordings. I don't want any evidence left behind that could come back to hurt me, understand? Well, at least now I could confirm what I had heard or prove to my clients that they were mistaken, but I didn't think they were. John brought everything over just after 2 o'clock the next morning. Cameras, recordings and microphones, everything was there. With a check for $700 in his pocket, he was gone and I went to bed. I was going to take a peek at one of the recordings, but decided I'd better get a good night's sleep because there was no telling what was going to happen next. Anne and Linda drove together to my house. They had a bag of donuts and coffee from Starbucks. It looks like I didn't need to make breakfast. Have you looked at the recordings yet? Anne asked, pouring herself a cup of coffee and grabbing a donut. Nope, but I've already put one in the DVD player. Well then, let's see what we've got Linda mumbled munching on the last of her donut. And to think we felt sorry for her enough to force our husbands to hire her to organize these parties again. We're so sorry about that, Steve. There sure was a lot of, I'm sorry, going around. No problem, you didn't know and to tell you the truth, neither did I. But I do now. Unless you want to watch more, I'd like to turn off this garbage I hit the stop button. That terrible person is done for when I get home Anne said fuming. I don't even want to see mine Linda yelled. I'm going to call and tell him to collect his stuff and leave. I let them vent for a few more minutes before speaking up. Ladies, I said as two angry women looked my way. Whether you like it or not, we still need them. For what? Anne screamed back. Their jobs. They're both very competent at what they do when they're at work. Right now, if this company is to survive, we're going to need their help. The two women sat down but were far from calm. I've got a proposal for the both of you that will get you the revenge you want on your husbands and still keep the company in one piece. I had their attention. For the next two hours, I explained my plan. They didn't like all of it, but went along with most of my suggestions. I called up our company attorney and three hours later our agreement was signed, sealed, and notarized. Please don't go crazy on them until the paperwork is filed with the court Monday morning I pleaded with them. By Tuesday you'll have the upper hand, and I don't care what you do after that. And I really didn't. My ex-best friends had betrayed me, especially Ken, and they'd get what they deserved one way or another. Monday was a typical Monday. We had a lot to catch up on. After our morning meeting, I went into my office, shut the door, and called my ex-wife. You silly person, I knew you couldn't stay away from me. I'll be there by seven, honey. I guess I shouldn't have played along, but I just couldn't help myself. I thought to myself but felt I owed her a heads up because if for no other reason she was the mother of my two children, but thank goodness not my wife any longer. I left the front door open and just before seven she walked in wearing a long coat. I handed her a glass of wine and clinked glasses with her. To a once great marriage, I said downing my glass as a puzzled Heather looked on. Please have a seat, because you're going to want to hear what I'm about to tell you. The parties are over as of last Saturday. No more parties, no more fooling around, no more Ken and Andy, but they still owe me for Saturday. I pulled out a wad of cash from my pocket. If I was being mean, I'd turn this tape over to the authorities, but you're still our kid's mother and I'm not taking them to jail to see you. Steve, I'm sorry I needed the money to live. There will be serious consequences for Andy and Ken tomorrow and it won't be pretty. I suggest you leave town for a few weeks. Maybe you can visit your mother out of state until this settles down. I can't and won't stop you from seeing the kids, nor will I tell them what happened that's between you and your conscience. However, until you get yourself together, you can see them only at this house. You cannot take them anywhere on your own. 
and absolutely no overnight visits. Do we agree on that? I never had anyone there when I had the kids over. How foolish do you think I am? I simply looked at her. I'm just sorry it all had to end this way. I thought we had a pretty good marriage, but I guess you wanted more than I was willing to give. I thought for a moment she was going to beg for us to give it another try, and if I hadn't seen the tape I might have considered it, but not anymore. Heck, there was no way I'd go back with her, even though she still made me feel attracted. We talked and made plans for the future, and within an hour she was gone. She did give me a hug. Anne divorced Ken, and for some reason Linda decided to try and make it work with Andy even though I still wouldn't want to be in his situation. You see, each of the ladies got 50% of their husband's stock in our company. With that stock, Linda, Anne, and myself now had a controlling interest in the company. Andy and Ken were told that they could still keep their jobs, but would only be paid based on their performance for the company from now on they weren't happy about that, but something about child support payments and a possible impending divorce kept them working. We made the necessary changes to restore our company's reputation, and even though we lost a few accounts, we kept our loyal client base. Now, only Linda, Anne, and I attend the monthly meetings. We're considering expanding next year and adding a few new graphic designers, but that'll be our decision. I'm getting a lot of attention on my personality profile and have even gone on dates with a few people. One young lady has caught my eye. Her name is Kikyo and she lives in Japan. She's a single mother of one and is planning a trip to the United States next month. We video chatted over the computer and she seems very nice but was concerned about what she's heard about disrespectful Americans and asked me directly why my wife and I separated. When I told her, she smiled and said that she was eager to meet me.